So this section, the section number two is the open source, particularly on the, uh, this section number two is focused on the share script. Okay, now everything we are doing here can be done on either PC, Macintosh, or Linux, or slash Unix. Personally, I believe the Linux is the way to go. Okay, because there are more capability than PC or than Macintosh. Macintosh is okay, but Macintosh is too expensive. Okay, yeah, you, yeah Bob laughing. He, he is offer. It can be by. <coughs> <coughs> but we can do the same thing, even much cheaper. You know, with a small cost. I believe on the market, either Macintosh as machine that the Bob just handle is about. In the USA, uh, I would say maybe twelve hundred, one thousand and two hundred. Okay, we can do a very similar thing as I did, with only two fifty, two hundred fifty US dollar. Identical, identical. No, except that machine come with another word processing, no more fancy one. Look like page numbers or whatever you call it, one one page something. Okay. Otherwise, you no. Know, Identical, you said the same. So in terms of the money, I will pick up a, a PC instead of Macintosh. Okay. Again, I don't buy any stocks for Windows from Microsoft. I don't buy stock from Apple. <laughs> okay, now this session we're going to talk about the desktop environment. Again, whatever we are, I'm teaching here can be done on a window. On a Macintosh or on a Linux, okay. Now we are going to talking about uh, Linux bash shear programming or scripting. We're going to talk about the first basic, very really, very really, very really simple base. I'm not going to teach you or tell you how to do program in Perl, but at least you you should be able to know how to run use the program, the Perl script, which you already written for you. You should be able to type. The keyword and to get data, download data from the NODC website. Okay, that's the key issue, and I like make sure that you should be able to do that out of the class. Okay, number four, maybe a little bit challenge for most people in the room, programming in R, but should not so difficult. You know, once you learn it, and you, to me, as you know how to type, you should be able to use an R. Okay, you know how to type. That that's the point. Okay, so what is a desktop environment? A desktop environment, or sometimes called DE for short, is an implementation of a graphical user interface, commonly meaning in a physical desktop. So, so you should be able to see a, a, a very fancy window open, look like window, you know window, window piece is part of, is one of the desktop environment, or Macintosh OS, or Linux. Let it, and we'll talk about Linux later on. So a desktop, a, I mean a desktop environment also should provide window manager. And it's very, you know, you know, everybody should know. Most people know the window, uh, uh, Windows. You know, uh, starting from Windows, uh, it Windows, not Windows, whatever the number they call. When they call Windows, two thousand, whatever they call. Two, two, oh no, I'm sorry, Windows eight. The Microsoft are always changing the naming about the window. They start from Windows 2000, Windows 2000, or no, they keep, but the latest one called Windows 8. And I have Windows 8 on that machine as well, but I really don't really like Windows 8. You know, it's just a little bit headache for me. DE, the desktop environment in Linux, spent a diverse spectrum of style. There are so many you know, Linux desktop application, you, you can tell, you, know, you, go, you can go to web page and search for Linux, come out thousands, or more than thousands could be you know, or Linux. But this is kind of overview about the text operation system. So right now, we, we, this, the, the top, there are three top desktop application uh, operating system. The first one is Windows. So Windows has the biggest user base and business application, so it's just I, I recall back to, to uh, 1983 when the when first time 
uh, Apple introduce Apple two E something. Okay, and in the meantime, Windows introduce Windows, you no, know, Windows, Windows PC Junior something. That's my first machine called PC Junior, only two slot. Okay, so that back to nineteen eighty two. Just a year before that, there's some company introduced a very fancy kind of tool allow use user or can interact with 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 the TV. I don't know what that called, but that died. You no, know, it didn't 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 fly. So a year after, uh, when Microsoft introduced Windows PC, at that time I don't believe the Windows can fly. You no, know, I just say this is you no, know, cannot be happen in in my daily life. However, the window no, Microsoft did an excellent job. You know, they very nice. Almost everybody, you cannot live with window. It's just just so used to. So a lot of application available right now. That's that's a point. Okay, because Windows easy to get, and, and at the very beginning, Microsoft they, they sell Windows. You have to pay, but right now they make it free. Because in terms of make it free, you have to buy their PC. Okay, the good thing is that you you buy the uh, PC, the personal computer. You can install Linux on your on, on your on your PC. Look, at that, I did. I installed one, not this one, but the one over there. You know, so let's okay, take advantage on that. The second operation system biggest is a Macintosh, Macintosh OS X, because it is lower, it's low maintenance, it's better security. Okay, I said, I respect that. It's definitely true, and also comes with a bundle with hardware. But again, sometimes they give you something that re you really don't need it. Okay. Now the oh, for example, you no, know, I to me I don't play game. I don't play, you know, the the really fancy fighting game. So but sometimes the PC or Mac always come with like a bundle as a sound as a freeware give to you. Which I use this example, say sometimes the provider gives you something you really don't need it. So I will write it to start from scratch from what I really need. And that's the message I'm going to get pass to you. Say, this is the way I see you can do oceanography or meteorological data management much better. No. So the last one is called the Linux and or slash Unix. It, this is a kind of interchangeable, but they are not quite the same. But they are close enough. You learn Linux, you can apply it to the Unix, or, or vice versa. You learn Unix, you can apply it to Linux. Either way, okay, they they are free. They are run pretty well on old hardware, and they, on old hardware, sometimes you, you, you old hardware is getting too old. The window or Macintosh will not support, which I believe that. You no, know, I, I have the Macintosh called uh, uh, iBook, back to maybe um, I would say six, six or seven years ago. Right now, that become obsolete because Macintosh or Apple. They don't want to support that machine because it's too old. It's hard in terms of hardware, it's too old. So they have difficulty to upgrade to a newer newer operating system. So that can become a junk, you know, sitting in my disk, doing nothing. The same thing for, for, for Windows as well. Now I have a Windows uh, data PC running uh, Windows ME, you know, that was back to maybe 10 years ago. It became obsolete because Windows say they're going to discontinue, discontinue support Windows Explorer and Windows XP. So become wasted. However, you are running Linux, we, we can reuse that one. Look at the machine over there. When I bought that, it was running Windows ME. Yeah, so it's almost Windows 2000, that kind. Right now, so I wipe out everything and then reload with the, the software that I'm going to introduce to you later on, called the Ubuntu. Okay, it don't look like a pretty new machine. So so that's a good advantage for being using a Linux slash Unix system. Uh, on an older machine, so when you when you pick out your operating system, you there are a couple of factors you to think about. It. The first one is the low cost. Got to be you don't want to buy high end. You, you, uh, not the higher end is better, but you really don't need that. You know, sometimes kind of waste all your resource. So, so the first the first thing I would think is okay, can I buy can I use a much cheaper you know machine like low cost. Low maintenance. I don't want to spend too much time on maintain on my my, my equipment. Okay, I, I maybe minimum do, uh, maintenance, but not a really high end maintenance. Okay, got to be user friendly. I don't want to buy something that I have a headache. And I have to learn a lot and before I can use it. So, low cost, 
non-maintenance, user-friendly, yeah, user-friendly, and also secure. Okay, right now, actually secure, that number one is not really the issue to me because once I turned off, nobody can hack into my machine. So no, security, that's fine. And the very last one is the stability, stable. I don't want to turn on the machine and crash one or two or three times. It's crash and I have to reboot with the headache. That happened in the old day when you had window PC, it crashed so many times and totally you had to reboot, 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 and still cannot work. So the, 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 this five factor is the, is the factor you have to think about when you pick out the uh, operation system. So based on the, all the factors, I, and I come out with called the Linux base shared scripting. Okay, so, so let's talk about what is open source. The open source refers to a program in which the source code is available to the general public. And not just for public use, but also allowed use it to modify, okay? And most likely, we were not going to modify it. I never modified open source, you know, I just use. And, and, and they got to be free of charge. And also, the open source allow you to distribute, okay? Sometimes you get, this is free, this is free for you only. You cannot distribute to third party, but open source, under the policy open source, you are allowed to give to your friends. Okay, so that's, that's the beauty for the open source, of being open source. Not just free to use, but I believe it's free to distribute, okay. And also, that's a kind of requirement to, to compile with the certification standard issued by Open Source Initiative, or called OSI for short, that indicate the source code of a computer program is made available free of charge to the general public. That's kind of requirement, okay. The open source, when you use open source, you're not close your eye and just run it and use it. You have to think about the following five you know, factors or point, intended use, what you like to use, okay, what's your intention, what's your purpose to use open source. Do you have commercial support for doing this? Okay, this is just a factor. No, you don't have to be, got to be commercial support. I don't know you, anybody know, called the MySQL, M-Y-S-Q-L. This is used for a uh, uh, relational database. MySQL come out with the free, so free software and you are easy to download and install. They provide some kind of commercial support, which means you pay, you have question, you really have question for some of the uh, uh, software, and you have to pay. Right now, the My MySQL brought by uh, Oracle. So MySQL is really, really the equivalent to Oracle, which you, know, you got free, but you need the support. You should be able to get it from Oracle to, to get support. And you pay, I don't know the amount, no, because I'm not, I, I don't buy Oracle stock, so I don't know. So so think about that, you are using, you need some kind of commercial support. It may, you may to buy something that's supported by some kind of private company. Hardware compatibility. Okay, can be in really installed on a different hardware. Okay, software. Do you need software uh, compatibility issue and community? Is this, uh, this, this open source you're going to use is supported by a lot of people or just by a very small group? So, if the open source supported by a wide community, I think that's a better one because easy to get open source. Easy to get, easy to get some kind of module shared by some other people. Okay. So that's the five point you have to think about when you start using open source. So this is the open source operating system for Linux, and you go online, you can you, you can search that, you can get out. Oh, that's you get confused. And to me, now I confused, and and I have difficulty to to choose which one is better for me. Until maybe two years ago, when I meet with the IOD, we come down here for TTP meeting, and we I initiate some kind of conversation with the people. With IT people, you no, know, look at Mark or IT next door, and uh, I ask them what kind of software that uh, what kind of open source software that used by ILD, and uh, they say oh, they use Ubuntu. The second one, the Ubuntu Linux. I say to me, this is I, I try all of them, most almost all of them. Okay, and I still feel that the Ubuntu is that's the way to go. Okay, so you, so I this this just for information only. 
And uh, the original Linux is based on the BSD, uh, which is coming from uh, University of California at uh, Berkeley. Okay. So the advantage of using Ubuntu is this is the most popular Linux distribution. Plenty of user and the website support it. It's user friendly and it's free of charge. Yes, I don't pay, pay anything. Okay, and uh, you have question or difficulty to use Ubuntu. We just go online and search for you know, it's, or you can find an answer. So, so to me, it's it's a uh, it's good. It's good. It's free. It's you know, it's easy to use. So this is a minimal requirement for running Ubuntu in any on your PC. You, don't, you only need one gigabyte. Or, I'm sorry, one gigahertz. The three eighty six per processor. Pending four. Pending four is almost ten years old. It's older than that. So if you have a PC running Pending four. Okay. They suggest 512 megabytes RAM. However, I think this is a little bit too, too. We need more memory. My personal experience tell me at least we need a two gigabyte RAM suggest. Okay, right now you go to on the street buy a PC, they always come with a gigabyte. So, so this should be not an issue at all. Five gigabyte free disk space for installation. Now you install window, it's just five gigabyte. The actual, the auto install, the actual space, not that much. But I would just say maybe, no, if you are megabyte, the disk space only. Okay, not, they are using very small disk space. Okay, and uh, you need a graphic you know, uh, capable, capable for at least 800 by 600 resolution. The 1024 times 768 resolution is suggest. Okay, you need DVD drive or USB port for installation. You install material from DVD or from USB thumb drive, and you need that port. And the internet access is helpful, but not required. Okay, it's easy to get update. Okay, so let's come with the hands-on exercise. Right now, copy to your window. Copy to your 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 uh, screen. You just see, type, ls, means list, lowercase l a space dash a. You should be able to see there are two hidden pop hidden file called dot pro and dot b a s h r c. Okay, and I'll show you where it is. Okay, I hope you should be able to see that. Just L S lowercase space dash A. So you should be able to see those three files.
this is the how does it affect you? So, raise your hand. You didn't see that line. Everybody should be able to do that. Okay. Okay. So this is the two hidden uh, files when you interact with the server over there. Okay, now let's go to next steps. So the two files, the first one called the dot prof. Each time when you log in to the server, and the, the dot prof will start. They will run through the individual line, line by line, and they set out your working environment for you. Okay, so that only run one type only, called the dot prof profile. The second one called the dot B A S H R C. Each time when you type a command, say for example LS, it was sent to the server, and the server will look in for that B A S S R C now for you and to respond back. So that's the two important hidden file on your root directory. So right now, your root directory is called uh, USR01 or 02, and you see a small dollar sign. Only so that's your home directory, a very top level. Okay, so so each time you log in, you are looking for that profile only one 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 time only. Each time when you submit a command, they say that will tell you the detail of those command. What that really mean? Say I want to change it to a different area. I call CD, change directory. You just say CD, and we type something. You were looking for. Dot B S S R C. Where is CD located? What does that really mean? Now you tap and Linux is upper, is case sensitive. You just say uppercase C D. Then you cannot looking for it because C D uppercase cannot be recognized. It's not a Unix command. You got to say locate lowercase C D. And they were looking for dot B S S R C and try to locate where is C D and they will respond back to you, okay? So, this is, as I said, this is a home directory. It's under your user USR01 or 02, and that's your home directory. And the inside that file, there is a path, okay? And you can define your own path. Now, later I will get another home exercise later on, okay? Uh, we, we're going to copy as a working directory I already set up for different account called GTSPP, which Nigeria is using right now. So don't mess up that directory. We, otherwise, we, people will cannot otherwise other way to do something else. So right now, for everyone except Nigeria, type CP, this stands for copy, space, dash, R, which will recursively will be copy everything from the home directory of GTAPP, and beneath that, there is another directory called G -train, G Training. So just tap and don't hit anything. Just type C P stands for copy space dash R space slash home slash G T S P P slash G Training. Okay. Everybody done. Okay, now you, you, okay, press enter. Missing destination file. Hmm? Missing destination file. 
Do you, what do you mean? You can find that. Okay, so the so next occasionally, you will be asked to change to G training directory. Right now, you are stay at your home directory. Your will be say uh, home and use R zero one for example. Okay, occasionally I will ask you to change it to G training directory. Okay, so right now just stay where you are right now. Okay. And I knew that in Nigeria, you have some difficulty to connect to the server, right? You still, have some, but we can restart it later on. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so the next one. Okay. How many people heard about the VI? Is it, I don't know what VI stands for, but it's called the VIEW or something. What it stands for? I don't know. I use that, you know, it could be VIEW. But it's, it's, it's a tool. It's a way to do the editing. And uh, in the old day, uh, now look like me, that doesn't mean I'm really old. Yeah, I'm old, but not really too old. We used to use an line editor, one by nine, one, 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 one. Okay. And uh, later on, you have Windows, uh, Microsoft Word, allow you to do using a mouse and cut and paste and so forth. Okay. But let's just for the word process and purpose. And scientifically speaking, when you write a program, okay, no, personally I don't like that kind of tool. I'm using the line editor. VI is just a text editing software, allow you to do on screen, night by night, it can move browser away. And, and the code the tool allow you to do text editing. So so for exercise we take two, I mean two point two. We're going to practice using VI editor to edit the .bashrc file by adding one line called the paste underscore this. Okay, this is an exercise is good for next exercise for ODV Ocean Data View. Ocean Data View is installed on every single desktop machine PC here, but Running that ODV on PC to me is for GTPP is headache. It's look like impossible because the GTPP file just too large to load into ODV by using a window. You run it on Linux, just no problem at all. You can load as much as you like. For this exercise, we like to, I like to give you a demo running on Linux, but not really running on that machine because the machine very few is too small. So I will ask, I will check the desktop you know, later on to make sure that we can download a few GTPP files and on your local machine, which your desktop, and we will use an ODV from there. Okay, so this is just for demo purpose. I let you to learn how to use the VI, and I understood it will be difficult for everyone, most people anyway, to learn the first time by using VI. So what I like to do, um, I will demonstrate here and teach you, give a very brief you know, tips how to run using VI. So again, how many people heard and know how to use the VI? No? Okay, that's good. Okay. <laughs> that's all good, <laughs> maybe. But we will see, we will see. Uh, <laughs> but this is the way we, we run. And that, that's the way I'm going, I'm going to come here, come down here and to, to tell you how to use it. Okay. So, and then maybe it will change my, uh, my plan because I saw everybody should know VI, but that's okay. When I prepared the material, I gave to my colleague for review. And uh, she asked me, are you sure you really want to teach people how to use the VI? Because we use the VI for many, many years. So I said, well, I'm not sure yet. But we will see. Okay, so this is, a, I'm not surprised. I, I, this is what I expect. Okay, I expect that, I make assumptions that not everybody knows how to use the VI. So, so I'm going to tell you how to use the VI editor. I'm moving to another screen, which I have uh, running. I set out how to connect to the server over there. Okay, this is a 
window running on Macintosh. Okay, I'm going to connect, I hope, to the server over there so I can teach you how to run VI. So on, on Macintosh, you have to say, you don't have to install Xmin or Putty, look like a headache for everybody. Okay, that's a good beauty, that's a good part of Macintosh. You don't have to run install additional software to connect to the, to the learning server. All, the only thing you have to do is just say SSH, which is called Security Secure Share. I don't know what H stands for. Because secure Share Connection. It's, it's a client software. So you just say SSH. Is it big enough for you to see? Okay. And the dash X, which means I will invoke an X window. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I will say, uh, I'm using another uh, user account called USR09. Okay, and I will say uh, it as we did this morning, one nine two dot one sixty eight dot sixteen dot eighty six. Okay, I'm asking one one password. <coughs> uh, this got to be G T S P P O T G A. Okay, you will see. Not respond, it's good news because they're trying hard to connect to the server. Okay, let me try to close this one. Minimize this one. Hey, wake up. Now, there, there was a joke saying, you want to harm someone or give this person a hard time, you suggest it, do a live demo. <laughs> <laughs> see? So, see, that not fun. And I in this, in this case, you give a quick response. So, we'll see. Uh, no, no response. But here we are. Take too long. But here we are. Okay, so I will just demonstrate to you that I dem we did in early this morning. Say XI, and uh, oh, pop up, and uh, this is uh, so make sure that my connection to the server is working perfectly. So I'm going to close this one. Okay, so I just repeat what we did earlier today. So LS, this thing. So I should, I should, oh, LS dash A. LS just listing the content of the file in that directory. You see LS dash A will, will also show the hidden uh, hidden files, which all the file begin with dot. You will not you will hide behind the, the, the screen. So you see LS A will show everything in that directory. So so you see, you see the BSSRC file, right? And the profile. So we're talking about we're going to modify profile. Okay, it's called VI. Um, before I show you editing, I'm going to demonstrate to you there's a keystroke about the VI editor. I'm going to make a file. There's a, temp, there's a test file. TXT, and this is the ASCII file. P human can see. Okay. And I will give you a very real keyword to, um, for using the uh, 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 VI editor. Okay. So, first time, now you can try right now as, as, as I'm, I'm talking. By learning VI. So go to your screen and just say VI space test.txt. Okay, and you may need a note to write down what I'm going to tell you. There's a, there's a key to, to do something. Okay, so, so everybody prepare a piece of paper so you can write down. So the first thing, I'd like to enter the word. I call insert I. So you type I. Okay, right now type I, lowercase i, and you didn't see anything. But you see there's an insert on your lower left corner of the screen. See, do you see that insert? That's mean the system is waiting for you to type anything you like to type. Okay, so are we, anybody here so far? Okay, so, so right now the system is waiting for you to type. So you can just say 
is whatever you like to type. Now you, you, you can use it, uh, the arrow key on your keyboard and move, okay, to move around. So, so you can say this, whatever you like to type, this is whatever. Okay. Once you finish typing, this is done. You press the escape key and will turn out insert mode. So the first time you will insert, you want, to, you want to type something, you put our case I, and, and you will see the insert command on your lower left corner of the screen, and you can stop typing. Okay, okay. So once you finish typing, once you finish typing, you press escape on your keyboard. Of course, you cannot see from here, but you can escape, escape key on your keyboard, your lower upper lower left corner, the escape, escape key. Okay, and now turn off the insert. Okay, I'd like to check everybody, uh, you know, we are here. Yeah, very good. So, so far we learned one thing, the lowercase i. Okay, so when you hit lowercase i, it will allow you to in insert your cursor into the position of your cursor. So try, try uppercase i to see what happens. No, the machine won't hurt you, so just try uppercase i. We move to the big, uh, the, the first line, and you can type anything. Okay. Okay. Again. Okay. So, so, so you know how to do insert text. Okay. Now, try to do the next command. O. Lowercase O. Lowercase O. will allow you to insert text at the next line. So you should be able to see what I type here, the lower case. That's, that's waiting for you. That's a, that's a block. The black block area allow you, waiting for you to type. Okay, so again, you can type anything. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so far we learned two, two commands in VI. The first one is the lowercase i. The second one is the lowercase o. So the difference between i and o, the i allow you to tap at the cursor position. O allow you to tap the next line, at the beginning of the next line, okay? So this is where we are right now. So you still see insert on your left lower corner of the screen. Okay, the next thing allow you to press the enter key a couple of times. And you can type anything you like, as much as you like, until you pop out, move to the next screen. And I have a reason for asking you to do this. Okay, after that, you say, say escape. It's a little bit difficult to learn at the first place, but once you learn, you will like it. And to me, I would like it because I don't need special software to do you know, programming as I can as using VI. Because VI is very common in any uh, Linux operating system or Unix system. Okay, so so are we here? So you didn't see the first line right on your screen. You didn't see the insert on your lower left corner. Of the screen, right? Got nothing. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the next command, which is, which is a keystroke. Okay, you said hold, press, control. You see the control key on your keyboard, right? Control, press, and hold it. And the, and the U will up. Control, hold on it, hold. Simultaneously, you say control and U up. Will bring will take you to the beginning of the file. So control U is up. Okay, did 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 you see that? Yes, it takes me first to 
Okay, you take you to the USC, the your the first line on your on your screen. It doesn't take me directly to the first row. No, 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 no. But you will see. You you move up. But let go take you to the, the first line. Actually you will still remain the your the last position of your cursor. But at least it will bring the up is move up, move up. But right now we didn't we don't have a much large file, so it should be you should see the first line of your file. Control U will up, U up, U, I mean up. Okay. So anybody see your first line? Okay, that's a control U right up. Try control moving down, what does that mean? Down, D. So control D, D as in David. Well, will bring you down. And it depends on the size of your window, you know, how far they can move up, how far they will move down. It depends on your, your window size. So you control U will up, control D will down. Okay? And so, so we learn two things, two more things, right? Control U will up, control D will down. Okay, another, another tip. Uh, this is up and down. Up and down. Another way to move like the, the uh, forward and the backward. So try control F forward. Control B well backward. Okay. So the difference between control U or okay, control F is that control F or control B will will only have way, half page, will move your cursor, half page forward or half page down or backward. So you say control U will move the whole page up. Control D will move the whole page down. You say control F is forward or will move half, half page, not the whole page. The same thing for control B. Control B will move you uh, halfway backward. Okay. And and always sometimes you got power, you just always hit escape key. Okay. Yeah. So so don't be afraid, you know, just type in the you will not break my laptop. Uh, no. If it breaks, it's breaking. No, I will not so worry about that. So so just try. Okay. So I will give you another maybe two minutes to practice the four command, actually six. I what I mean insert. Right, we learn that I, lowercase I, lowercase O will insert the next nine, and also you can do uppercase I and uppercase O. So we learn how to use in the uh, control U, control D, control F, control B. So so I will stay here for another two minutes and allow you to tap more in in the under text. Can become familiar with the, those four very basic you know, command. Okay. Yes. Mike mentioned that there's online help. I'm looking for help. Yes, yes, yes. There's always online, you know. Yeah. You can say VI. Okay, okay now before I do that, let's let, let do this way. As, no, my, I'm about to remind me one thing. Save this file. Okay, how to save? You don't want to lose. Right now, it's only in the memory. Once you lose power, you got nothing. So be careful. No. You have to save. You don't want to waste last minute to save. So in the middle, or you type in, you better to save. So to, to save, uh, you press, I said it's called the uppercase, and, and the semicolon. Press uppercase, semicolon. Colon key. You see that? Yeah, okay. Let, let me walk around. There's a difficulty to do this. And I will resolve for you later on. Uh, okay. So, so to save, you just say, uh, normally I would just say W for, for write. Okay. And yeah. W for, for write. Okay. So, so we want to, once we save, we like to quit. Okay. Again, you, you put semicolon and say Q for quit. 
I will take you back to your screen. You said say semicolon and W or right. And you will see a new file show up. So, so don't don't feel sorry. That, you know, it takes time to learn. Now, to me, I, it it took me almost whole months to understand VI better. So so you know, you are okay. You, know, you are doing a very good job so far. So okay. So let's try to repeat what we learned so far by running the command say VI and, and take you back to the editor. So just say VI again and test.txt. We'll, we'll read your file, which you just created earlier. OK. So just say VI in the space, and followed by the file name, which I assume you said. You, you should type test.txt. Okay. So so far we learn so what we learn so far. Can you hear me? What we learn so far. What you learn so far. So far. You know how to type. You know how to use the I or insert. You know how to insert text. I, right? Insert I. Okay, and it, you, can, you learn how to use the O, the rocket O, to insert line after. Right? O is after. You, you, you say I, look, whatever, I'm going to add more text to what I have right now. I will say O. They will give me another additional line below that so I can start typing. Okay? And, and, and uh, earlier, I, I asked you to press the enter key many times because I like to add more. Okay, you, you can start typing. Okay, and then you should just say, you know, enter your whatever you like to type. Okay. Okay, until you move to less, until the first line disappears on the screen. And when you finish your typing, you just you, you, you type, you press escape. And then we'll end insert mode. Well, nice insert mode. So you press escape. The insert mode will stop. But you are still new at the cursor position. So to see 
or to move the page upward. You say control U will move the whole page. You say control B backward, depending on the position of your cursor. So control U will move you one page upward. Well, it depends on the, 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 the height of your window. So control U is move the full page upward. Control B will be move half page upward. So another way around is control D will control down, downward, or control F will forward. Forward means going down. So we learned four keys right now. Control U upward, control D downward, downward. Control F halfway forward, control B halfway upward. Okay. So so right now I'm going to move to the beginning of my file. So I will say, so try to control U. It depends on the the, 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 the height of the screen. So let's say so we so far we know we know how to type insert. I like to delete several words. Say so this is a typo. And very simple. Just say D or delete. So lowercase D. Type lowercase D. Um lowercase D is delete, and for some reason it didn't do what I expect to do. You can undo it. Undo it. Okay, to get you or undo it. Okay, it looks like I'm uppercase more. So. Because the lowercase d is allow you to delete one character at a time. And for some reason, I could not say delete d is to delete the whole line, which is uppercase d. Okay, so lowercase, the lowercase d is to, to delete one character at the end, at the cursor position. So I will see. No, it didn't do that way. Okay. Mm, because I really don't want to spend too much time on using teaching VI. This is not my purpose. So, so uh, I I will go another two more you know, uh, tips, and I will stop here. Okay. So supposedly the lowercase d will allow you to delete one character at a time. Okay. And another way I like to teach you is to move the cursor. Around, you can use the arrow key on your keyboard. Okay, this is the lower key. This is the arrow pointing downward on my keyboard. So this is allow you to move the cursor. So the, the arrow key allow you to move your 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 cursor around. So this is moving up, and then that to the right. The right arrow allow you to move the cursor to the right, and the, another key, the left arrow allow you to move to the left. So the, the arrow key on your keyboard allow you to move your cursor around. Okay. And this is MT9. So if I'm not using the arrow the right arrow, it won't allow me to go to the right because there's nothing there. Okay, so unless you say, okay, I'm going to tap something. And then you say, okay, you can tap. Okay. So let me try to say D for some reason D didn't did it that way. Mm. But remember, lowercase u without control, u, I mean undo. Okay. And you can, you can undo many times. You know, once time you say u, 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 it will, will take your previous, previous uh, uh, status. Okay. Let's say if you uh, do editing and you want to, to start from beginning, you want to get rid of your, what you do editing. So you go back to your insert mode by typing. Shift and the semicolon, and it just say quit. Will not save at, at, at all. Okay. W will save, but it just say quit. Will not save at all. Okay. You just say X. Will exit. Exit means save and exit. Okay. So so don't, earlier I told you say W to write. And then Q to 
get out, right? So if that's a shortcut, either x or another way called zz, which we'll talk about later, you say x will write and quit. There are two, two, two states at one time. x will write and quit. Okay, you just say q, that will not save at all. You just say w will save, that will just, just save, and we're waiting for your next command. Okay. So I will stop here for telling VI, but we can learn later on, you can practice how to use a VI later on. Okay. Now let's go back to my presentation. Uh, I don't know where it's my presentation. Let me see. Uh, oh, here we are. Okay. So in hence, hence the exercise, go back to your screen. And I understand that one person has a problem with the, uh, the system. And I will try to help her later on. So, so go back to your, to, to, your, to your screen, to your locking, locking screen. This is your locking screen. Uh, if you become too messy, you make too, too many characters on the screen, you can say clear. That came up. Okay, make it okay, clear. We'll clear everything. This is this is the latest command. Okay, now go back to where we are. Uh, the, the LS LS space LS means list space dash a. So you will see two hidden uh, uh, two hidden files. So we're going to the vi dot profile. Okay. So. Anybody here? Are we at the same stage? Vi space dot profile. Okay, so we will load vi dot profile into the screen. Okay, so because I like you to do some easier. Would that add this line to the end of the file? Okay. So I understand it might take more time for you to like to to type that line. Did anyone, anybody bring this file onto your screen? Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Now try to go down to the very last line. Do you know how to do that? Take yourself to the end of the file. Control. Down or control F, yeah. So either way, control, you can press it, see, what's the difference between control D or control F, okay. Oh. So this should be the last line of your file, okay. So we like to insert one line. So how what we supposed to do? What we should do? We like to insert one line at the end of the file. What do we, what do we have we have to do? We want to add one line at the end of the file. Add additional line. We we learned this morning, just two minutes ago, we learned I for what? Insert or type in. Now what's the next one? O. Yes. So you enter lowercase o. You don't. You can try uppercase. You won't hurt. I will insert before, but lowercase o allow you to insert after the current cursor position. Okay. You got that? So K 
carefully typing what you see on the right screen, paste, uppercase. Okay, I'm going to open this one so you can see it. Because we don't want to mess up uh, the paste. Mm, I always have difficulty to find out this one. Okay, can you see? We like to add this line. Pa begin with paste, uppercase, equal to double quote. It begin with dot slash. Just type exactly what you see on the screen. And there are no rush. Just you got to type exactly. Otherwise, you were unable to invoke ODV at all. No? Okay. No problem. Let me see. Using edited dot pro, right? Okay. That's okay. Uh, I could tell you another trick. Uh, we want to save the last line. Okay, right now, let's just say, I'm going to this window. Okay. This is where we are right now. Okay, if we have one additional line called begin with paste, right, paste and so forth. I'm going, I'm not, I don't want to finish the whole, whole sentence. Okay. So, the way to, to fix this problem, go back to your uh, command line, more say shift semicolon, okay, and I just say uh, put dot means current line and the right. Okay, I, I want to save the line which I just entered, right? And I say dot means current line, that means right. I want to save this line to, to another file, okay, and later I will teach you another trick how to load that into the dot b a s s r c so so right now i would say dot it means current position space w or right i want i want to say just a t1 you no know, just temporary one one nine so and 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 they say enter okay so i will save that line to a different file called t1 that's temporary only only one nine this is my personal convention and uh, so everybody did that? Understand? You want to save the last line which you just entered in the dot pole. Because I don't want you to retype the whole thing. So this is a trick how to save the one you just type. By doing that, you go back to your command line mode, which is called a shift same card, your command line only. And you just said, I want to save the current line space. I want to save, which means write, to a file. Normally, I just say, this is a temporary, or so T, or whatever you, you want to call it. Okay, yeah. So, so once you finish that, go back to your command line. This is called command line. And uh, what, do we, what do we should do? Quit. Quit means I do nothing. I, I, I don't want to save what I typed. So I just say quit. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry, quit is combination. Yeah. Okay, I do it too well. Let me just do, I'll repeat again. Uh, let's say I, I'm supposed to edit that B A S S R C. However, I make a mistake. I say I, I edit it on another file called the dot pro. So so I say we are dot pro, right? And I copy it to the end of the line. This is this is not quite cooperate with me. Okay, and this is what I type earlier, paste. equal to whatever the number it is. Okay? So I save this line. This is not correct, but you, you, your type is correct. Okay, I want to save this line only. So I, I go back to, I return back to the command line mode, which is 
semi shaped semicolon, and I put a dot. Means I want to save the current line, dot space, and I will say W for write space and save it to a file name. And you can say it's a TMP. It will be a new one. And 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 hit enter key. So it will save your line, which I entered to a file which is called TMP. Okay. Now since this is a mistake, so I don't want to save at all. So I just say Q, quit for exclamation. That that two two key two two key, Q and exclamation, and this will not save at all. But you will see additional file which is called the temp, which I just entered. Okay. So go back to the original. Suppose you should say V I dot B A S H R C right. So if you you load this way. So right now load B V I dot B A S S R C to the screen. Okay, and move to the end of the file. This is a relative big file. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now I like to load the previous line back into the end to end of this file. So what I did, I will say, 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 semicolon, take the go back to your command line, semicolon. So I would I like to read the file which I just saved, which suppose you be whatever I forgot which one. You, you, what the name, the file name you just entered. This should be uh, TMP, I believe. Now we'll read TMP, which I I just make it up. We'll bring that file back to the dot .basrc file. Okay, anybody with me? It doesn't look like very complicated. No? Okay. So so I will show everybody how to how to do it. Okay, so you so everything on profile. So so Yeah, I'll I'll come I'll come to you. Okay. We we stop here for for lunch and back by one thirty. Okay, and uh, I will stay a little longer, so so I will lose maybe ten minutes for my lunch. But everybody, if you are ready for lunch, I will say go ahead to do that. Okay, we will come back at one thirty. Okay.